My name is Robert Boardman. I am a consulting engineer for Juniper, and I know Keith hates it when we talk about ourselves, but this is kind of part of how I came up with this. I have the kind of the luxury to meet partners, customers all across Europe, and um, this kind of came from me having these conversations. A lot of people, I was talking to Keith about this talk, and a lot of people talk about how these are, these are common facts. Things I'm going to show you, some of your people are going to be like, hey, I do that every day. But you'd be shocked when you take out of these wireless professionals and you go into the normal life of just regular enterprise and regular people, they are doing a lot of this and they feel that these, they are structured. And so, this is my disclaimer, my two cents. This is my opinion. This is not Juniper's opinion. It's not Miss's opinion. It's not anybody's opinion but my own. I love to talk about it. I like to debate. I also like beer. So find me and we can talk about it. Um, Wi-Fi design and Wi-Fi in general, the reason why I got into Wi-Fi was because I really believe that it's the last art in networking. There's a couple of route switch people in here and I think route switch is boring. Two wires, you connect them, you configure them, right, you're fine. Easy to troubleshoot, easy to go. <laughs> yeah! Where you'll find with wireless, you can take the exact same buildings, the exact same architecture, exact same uh, materials, put them in two different locations, and you have two different RF plans. Or you can take four different designers and come up with four different networks, and they all work. So I'm a big art guy, so you'll see a lot of references in art. Um, Pablo Picasso is a little weird, but you know, I like his stuff. Uh, and he said, learn your rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. So we're going to start with AP orientation and selection. This is my favorite one. So how many people here mount APs on walls? Like that, right? Yeah, yeah, right? I'm not referring to APs mounted on walls like this. This is, there are right and wrong ways to do things. <laughs> What I'm talking about is things like this. So if you take a look, uh, we were doing a building where somebody had lots of money and decided to put APs in fire escapes. I don't know if anybody has ever put an AP in a fire escape. It costs more to put the cable in there than it does to put the AP. But we were looking at ways in how we could do it effectively and economically, if that's a word and you can use in this case. So what we actually did is we went out and tested it. So we're not saying, hey, because I don't know how many times I have heard somebody on a blog or on a webinar that says, you have to mount APs this way. This is the way it has to be done. I mean, if that's how you design it, you better. But in this situation, we're actually out and testing. Unfortunately, I didn't have Haman at the time, so we did it physically. Um, as you can see here, we're actually using the reflections to bring signal up and down, because I don't need a huge bit of capacity. This is a transition space. Nobody's coming out into the fire escape and hanging, well, that we know of, and hanging out. Um, and by the way, I'm still pushing UC to give us 3D uh, building plans, so if you ask him, we can get it on the future list. I don't know if how many, yeah. Thanks, Dan, can you put that on my list? Um, so when we're doing horizontally mounted, it's not wrong if you design that way. And so what I really want to get when we talk about orientation is get out of the mindset of it has to be done a certain way. Like this, who puts external antennas? Who loves external antennas? Yeah, I know a couple of guys do. I love them. I like putting RF where I want RF and I can control RF. So if you take a look at it, this is an office building. And most people would walk in and say, hey, that's an office building, you need to use Omnis. It's carpeted space. Well, if you take a look at the, the ceiling types in there, it's a little fun. Let's put Omnis right on the ceiling, right? Um, so these are actual live deployments. And then, I, so I thought I'd start showing an example of this. Um, this is a design done with external antennas. Keith's probably looking at it and saying, that's way too many APs. And so, as you're sitting here, I could have done it with just one AP, one Omni, stuck it in the center. Now, the problem you run into is this customer has a very active facilities department. They rearrange the office every six months. So you see this little square right there in the center? That's a whisper pod. Who knows whisper pod, silent room, you know those little pods that you sit around? They're about the ones that they were using, about a 20 dB loss. So 
as you're walking around, I could have used that Omni, but in six months, I'd have had to get back, and, which I probably should have used an Omni because I could have gotten paid every time I went back. But what we decided to do is use external antennas, and what this does is it allows it to give them a zone-based kind of deployment where no matter where the furniture got moved, you were dealing in zones, not in one area. So if something was affected, you brought it down to a smaller area. Now, I did outsource that design, so if anybody has any questions or issues, please go see Matt, our Mac. He's the one who did the demonstration for, or built that design for me. Um, now, I love how I decided to bag on security, and Stephen Orr comes to WLPC. So that's just lovely. Um, this is my next one. Not so much security as whole, but fear-mongering. So I'm gonna pick on WPA3, and I'm gonna tell you, and people are gonna try to beat me up about this afterwards, I think we are not, we shouldn't be pushing people to WPA3. I don't know how many times I've walked into a room and somebody goes, WPA3 now, you gotta do it now. Fast, free, frictionless, and secure. So the problem that I run into is, yes, it is very easy to use WPA3. Customers don't know they need a transition plan, though. Has anybody turned on WPA3 and watched laptops drop off? I have, because somebody goes, oh yeah, all the laptops support it now. Everything supports it now. Not everything does support it. So while I'm using WPA3, I use this as a conversational point for anything security related. When you start talking about security, security is very, very important. I don't want to say that it's not. Wow, I'm down to a minute, holy crap. Never mind. Have a transition plan. All right, I was going to talk about ChatGPT, but this, wow, this went off. So basically what it says is WPA2 Enterprise is still secure. The biggest problem with WPA Enterprise is people. Guess what the biggest problem with WPA3 is? People. So as you're doing it, just build a plan. Don't force people and tell them they have to do it now. And then here's a couple of real-world examples that of people, it's one company that uses an open network, 100%, it's a global company, uses an open network, open SSID. All the security is done at layer seven. Um, we're gonna skip RRM because we should already know that use RRM, static channel planning is used for special use cases, but use RRM. And then last, never challenging and never asking why. I don't know how many times I walk into some building and somebody goes, we gotta do this. That's actually not the case. Ask why they need to do this. Understand the outcome so you build the right solution instead of just replacing and bragging in technical debt. And then, so yeah. So lastly, another artist quote. Think outside of the box. Collapse the box. Take a sharp knife to it. Design is fun. We don't do enough critical thinking, I think, anymore. I think we have lost the art of critical thinking. So go out there and break some rules. Uh, lastly, I got to get my eight seconds of marketing in for Juniper tonight at our party. No sales pitches, all prizes and fun. Uh, we are going to take AI versus wireless engineers. We are going to actually, Peter has provided us a very fun list of questions, and we're going to see if people can beat ChatGPT. And if you come and actually are willing to go up against Peter's questions, you do get a prize. So there is no you have to be right. And... Finally, thank you. If you want to find me, I'm there. <laughs>